Hello, everybody, it's Daniel Tinier, and welcome to my review of the Transformer Studio Series Gamer Edition Optimus Prime from War for Cybertron. Now, I've got to establish something right off the bat here. I've never played this game. <laughs> I've never played this game. I've never played either of them. I always wanted to, but I never could. There was, I never had the ability to as a kid. Always wanted to play them. Never had the ability to. My parents never got them for me. Uh, yeah, never played these games. So I don't know anything about them. Um, I do know that I really like some of the designs though. And, uh, this was not one of the ones that I really liked. I really like the fall of Cybertron Optimus Prime design. If you've ever seen the figure, um, Planet X Jupiter is a figure that I absolutely love, and I really want Hasbro to make to do one of that design of Optimus Prime. I want base I want that Planet X figure as a chug figure, basically, is what I'm saying. And um, in order to get that, I gotta support this guy. Although I gotta be honest, man, when the reviews came out for this thing, I got really fucking excited to get this thing. And uh yeah, it was one that I really, really, really wanted to get. I will say, though, that um, it's not quite the soul-shredding guitar solo that I was expecting this figure to be. Don't take this the wrong way. This thing is awesome, and I absolutely love it. But I was expecting this to be like a, like, an, like an absolute like home run of a figure. And I do have a few issues with this figure. Nothing major. I do absolutely love it overall. Spoiler alert for the review. But, um... He has a little, he has a few tiny little issues, but before we get into him, I have to establish one other thing. So my, uh, my Gamer Edition Optimus Prime actually has an upgrade kit. I have this filler kit right here. This is actually a, uh, this is supposed to be a hollow void, and so is this right here. This is a 3D printed filler kit. And back here, Scourge right here, is holding up this card for TF Lab. This is a, uh, eBay seller. A, they make, um, they make Transformer upgrade kits. And they make Transformer upgrade kits. And I actually bought from them my uh, Studio Series Scourge back there. You guys remember my Scourge review? I hated his floppy smokestacks. Well, I went online and I found the TF Lab had these, um, had this kit for Studio Series Scourge that gave him these caps right here on the smokestacks right here, and these make these stable. So these no longer flop around for me, which is absolutely glorious. Fixed my one problem with this guy. And after I bought that from them, they sent me a coupon, and I got a little bit of a discount on if I ever bought another one of their uh, products. And when I went to pick up uh, eBay, uh, Optimus Prime, because I did have to get him on eBay, and I did pay scalper prices, I unfortunately missed the pre-order for this guy. Well, actually, no, he went for pre-order, and I didn't want him originally. Then the reviews came out, and I wanted him. So, yeah, that's what happened. So I had to pay the scalper prices for this guy, unfortunately, but at least I got him. Um, but yeah, when I was getting him, I got that. I had that coupon to get a little discount on uh, another TF Lab products, so I grabbed up this uh, filler kit, and I'm really glad I did. This filler kit absolutely rules because not having those voids right there, that is glorious. Love it. Love it. Love you. Gonna be buying much more from you, TF Lab, if you're watching this. You've got the new regular customer. Anyway, before we jump into him, I know, oh, don't worry, one more thing, but I haven't thrown the box away yet, so I figured I would show you guys the box. So here is the box right there, Gamer Edition, Optimus Prime right there. This is an awesome thing. I'm so happy they're doing this Gamer Edition thing. I really, I am gonna, I am hoping to get the rest of the ones from this, Barricade and Bumblebee. I do want to get them. Uh, I'm not sure when, but I do want to get them. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad they're doing this, and I can't wait for Megatron. Holy shit, that was another reason why I picked him up, because I love the Megatron design from this game, and they have already shown the Megatron. They they confirmed they were doing a Megatron, and I was like, I have to get up this Prime to go with Megatron. So that was another reason why I picked this up. And since then, they have revealed the Megatron, and it looks awesome. So very excited for the Megatron. And again, I really want them to do Fall of Cybertron Optimus Prime. And I would absolutely love some other ones too. Um, uh, Soundwave. I love his I love his design from those games. Soundwave would be a cool one. So please make that one. And I always wanted the Voyager class Soundwave figure from War for Cybertron. It might have been Fall of Cybertron, one of them, but. I always wanted that figure and I could never get it. So make it, make it, dude. I would do it. But with that being said, now I've gotten everything out of the way. Let's jump into the review of Studio Series Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. He is amazing. He is absolutely amazing. Let's get in here on the sculpt. So here is his teeny tiny little head sculpt. Look at it. Look how small his head sculpt is. This guy is like Beefamous Prime, dude. That's what I'm going to call this guy. Whenever I use him for comparisons or I bring him in, I'm calling him Beefamous Prime because look at this, dude. Look at this. He's just like beefcake. I want to do like the Russian, the the Russian like fucking like flex right here. <laughs> 
Beefcake! <laughs> Beef of Miss Prime, absolutely love it. But yeah, there's this tiny little head sculpt. Absolutely love it. Moving down to the arms. He does have some really cool, like, camouflage Autobot logos right there. I think that's game accurate, so very, very cool. And then moving down to the crotch piece right there. There's some nice texture work going in on that crotch piece. Really, really love it. Moving down to the legs right here. They're very blocky. Like, they don't even have, like, like, a, like a little, like, indent right there for the knees. It's just all, like, massive fucking chunks of plastic, dude. This whole guy is just so big. And he's very heavy, too. I actually haven't compared his weight to... Oh, yeah. He's way heavier than Earthrise Prime, man. This dude is very, very heavy. Which is funny, because that's gonna lead me into my first kind of issue with this guy. And that is that he's kind of short. So, Gamer, Ob Gamer Edition Optimus Prime is a Voyager class figure. And he is kind of short. You can see how much shorter he is compared to Earthrise Optimus Prime. And I know that a lot of you probably think that that one looked okay. But this was one that kind of made me kind of question this. He's shorter than Bayverse Optimus Prime. Than standard Studio Series Optimus Prime. And this is already a short Voyager, man. So, I don't know. He's very short. He actually feels more like a big deluxe. Only in robot mode, though. In vehicle mode, he definitely feels like a Voyager. But this isn't a huge deal. But I wish he was just a little bit taller. I think he's gonna look a little too short when I keep when I cuz I am gonna obviously I'm, I'm keeping this guy um uh, I think he's gonna look a little too short when I bring him in for comparison to stuff probably not compared to like the gamer edition stuff like Bumblebee and Barricade and all that But like compared to like these other Optimus Primes or like Galatron or Tarn or anything like that He seems a little short to me now, real quick, one thing we gotta talk about with this guy is the back. And I always, I always forget to talk about the back in my Transformer reviews. I, I apologize for that. I always want to bring up the backpack in my Transformer reviews, but I always forget to. But I'm not forgetting it this time. So, Hasbro has made the decision to try and make the backs accurate to the game. Because apparently in the game, you can see the backs of the character. Most of the game because it's a third person game. So you can see the back. So they wanted to make it accurate. Although it's not 100% accurate. Because apparently he's supposed to have like a big ass Autobot logo back here. And they were not able to get that. It's not their fault though. Like the way that this transforms there was no place to put that Autobot logo. And unfortunately that brings me. Actually you know what I'll save that a little bit longer. But there's another problem with this backpack that I'm going to get into. It might not be a problem for anybody. But for everybody. But it's a big problem for me anyway. Um, But yeah that is. Uh, that's it for the sculpting basically. The, the legs are also very very nice guess some nice like things over here as well there's some really nice sculpting going on like the arms and everything as well the the way that they move out is a little bit weird kind of looks a little bit like uh kingdom rhinox or uh studio series blur and it will look even worse if you don't have this upgrade kit so if you pick this guy up maybe grab this upgrade kit it was only like seven bucks so highly recommended um so yeah that that will look even worse for you if you don't have this let me see if i can actually pop this out real quick yeah there we go so that's what it will look like without the upgrade kit. It's ugly. So definitely, if you can afford it, maybe grab this upgrade kit. I definitely can recommend it. So, um... So yeah, the articulation's a little weird, but it's not that big a deal. And then a few other issues I have with this guy. One, honestly, probably my biggest issue at all completely with this figure is that his waist is really, really loose. Like, look how loose this is. Like, my pinky. Look, pinky. Very, very, very loose. Now, I've got some Kiki's joint tightener on the way, and as soon as I get that, I'm definitely going to pump some in there and try and tighten that joint up, but I'm really not a fan of how loose this is. This does not feel like quality, especially me who had to pay scalper prices for this guy so not happy about that and then I think with that we can move into let's talk about articulation real quick so the head is on a really nice ball joint it can go up and down and all around it's very very nice the arms move out they only go up to there but that's okay nice point uh, joint at the at the at the uh, arms right here although I will say one thing about the arms is that this arm because it has a gimmick to it folds in a little bit more than this arm right there so yeah got to keep that in mind like if you have them like this like this this arm just goes in a little bit more than this one. Obviously, you can very easily balance that out, but it, it is kind of it is kind of weird because you might want to have his arms bend in a little bit more, but you'll find that you can only do it with this arm, and if you want to give him his gun arm, you have to pop this arm off. And talking about that, unfortunately, another issue I have with this guy is this on my copy is very, very loose. This likes to pop off very easily. So his arm comes off for this gimmick. So the whole gimmick of this Gamer Edition line is going to be that they're all going to have interchangeable gun arms arms for the fall of Cybertron War for Cybertron guys anyway like Barricade and Bumblebee comes with a whole fucking arsenal of them and they're gonna be able to all switch the uh the um to switch the arms you can put any gun you want on them because apparently that's how it is in the game um 
and he does come with one, but it's very loose. Like this pops off just way too easily in my opinion, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix that. Um, I, I don't know if it'd be a good idea to rub some super glue around in there because it might get stuck in there, and I do want to be able to remove it because I like the gun arm that he comes with. And the gun arm is tight. We'll, we'll talk about that in a bit here, but yeah, I wish this could have just been ever so slightly tighter because like you can see, it, it's very, 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 very weak in there. Like the connection point is not very good. And then the other rest of articulation, you get the, the legs can go up pretty good. They can go back. He has about a 90 degree bend in his, uh, his knee. Uh, he had, like I said, I would talk about the arms. But one thing about the arms that I also want to say is that the way he is transformed is these pieces like come out. And that's a really cool step of the transformation. And you can use this to get some butterfly here. So you can see this is now exposed. Be careful though, because these are on my like, bars here. But they look, they look pretty sturdy though. But you can use this to get some butterfly movement right there. So he can get some really good poses. And you can only bring in like that and then like push it back in a little bit more if you want to like the joint back in there because it does look a little bit weird obviously. Like that's obviously how it's supposed to look. And then if you pull it out for use this, that's what you're gonna have. But you can kind of push it in there and kind of get around it and make it look good from certain angles. So that's great. I have had an absolute blast posing this guy. And one of the reasons for that and one of the reasons why I decided to get this guy is because this guy has got some kick ass accessories. First up, his gun arm right here. This looks great. There's no handle, so you can't like give it to him as a regular gun. The only way to give it to him is the gun arm thing. And I'm okay with that because I dig gun hands. You hear that perspective, Ed? I don't care. I love gun hand. Gun hand gun hands are awesome in my opinion. But anyway, there you have the gun arm right there. So you just plug that on and you can do this. It is blast effect compatible, which is awesome, and you can do that. It does look a little bit strange the way it goes on. Like it does look a little bit strange. Not too bad though. Though, but it is pretty darn cool and again if you get barricade and bumblebee you will be able to switch all the guns and, Bel and bumblebee comes with like two three guns so very very cool i definitely want to get those other two figures but yes yeah, super super cool love the way that that looks yeah it it's just really cool you can have a ton of fun with this and then you also get his axe now um apparently to the people who have played the game this axe is kind of shitty because it's not painted very well but to me it looks great i love this axe i think it looks awesome nice energy John effects right here. The unpainted gray plastic could have been better, but they're already, there's so much quality and passion in this figure alone, especially in the transformation that, um, the transformation and the accessories and all that, that I don't mind the lack of paint right here on this, uh, on this accessory. And this accessory breaks down into multiple pieces right here, which is pretty darn cool. So for storage or whatever, unfortunately, that leads me into my next problem with Optimus Prime, and that is that there is almost no weapon storage with this guy, like none whatsoever. Whatsoever. You have no place to put the gun. So the only thing you can do is you can take his arm when you have the gun arm on You can take his arm and you can plug it into the stand port in his ass right there And it looks ridiculous anyway, but aside from that This is the only piece of storage that you have on this figure. There is nowhere to plug the, the, the axe on the back There's nowhere to plug the gun on the back and you just have to sit them off to the side when you're not using them And I'm not a fan of that you guys know how much I love weapon storage and there is just no weapon storage here I mean you can just kind of sit it back there and then I also will say that there is a way to just kind of wedge this back here and it, and it does kind of just stay there. It, it does like there, that's even there's actually I think there's a better way I found actually where you like you have the tip facing down and you can like wedge that in there like 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 that yeah. So you can get it like that. So it can like kind of rest back there. So you can do that on the shelf and that's what I'm gonna do when you put them on the shelf. You can just rest it back there. But again, no place to put the ax whatsoever, but you'll have to put that one in storage, I guess, unless you wanna give it to him, obviously. Um, but it is it is nice that, that you can uh, keep the hand on him though, but still, yeah. And it would have just been so great if there was just somewhere to plug this. I understand that there's no space back here because I had to do the game accurate back and this is how the transformation works and all that. So I understand why there's no storage, but I still wish there was storage. I will say though, if you really want to, if you really need storage for this gun that bad, you can plug the blast effect peg into the, into the stand port in his butt right here. So this is an option. <laughs> it will stay back there, but I mean, you can't see it from the front, but yeah, not a great option, but it's an option. 
And the final little feature we got to talk about before we go comparison and transformation, good god, this is going to be a long review, is he does have a Matrix. Hell yes, I love it when my Optimus Primes have Matrix gimmicks. You just open up these two doors right there, and you have your Matrix here. The Matrix itself looks pretty shitty, but come on, this is just great that they put this in here. Just more evidence why this is a quality figure and why there was, uh, why they had to kind of cut the budget a little bit on the axe right here. Because look at this. You get an opening Matrix chamber and, an, oh, and a Matrix, and it does come out and everything. Can't really do anything with it, but it's so cool. I love when my Optimus Primes have a Matrix gimmick. I don't know why, because I never used them, but I just love it. it. It just feels like that extra mile, like that extra leap that they took to make it a quality Optimus Prime figure, and I dig it every single time. All right, now for comparison, here he is with Earthrise Optimus and Laser Optimus, just so you can get a look at how he stacked up with some other Optimuses, and yeah, again, he's very short compared to them, but hey, it is what it is, and I've already made it very clear that I love this figure, so <laughs> another comparison I'll throw in here is with the absolutely phenomenal Legacy Tarn, easily one of my favorite figures of the year, and the final one is with is with Studio Series Galvatron. I don't have any, I don't have either of the other two game reverse things, so this is really all I can give you, but yeah. Here's Prime RC, just so you can see how he scales with a deluxe, so yeah. He's still, he's still Voyager size about. And here he is with Jason and Rimuru. Transformation is super easy and super fun. So first you're going to fold up the arms just like this. Then you want to take these two pieces here and you want to bring them out, which is super, super cool. Then you want to come back here, fold this piece down, go ahead and rotate his waist around. And you're also going to have to rotate this piece around, which you usually want to do when it's like this, but then you kind of have to like, kind of like, you have to like kind of like go up and over these like bumps of the waist right there. So you just do that. And then you want to rotate these pieces around so that these pieces are in the back, just like that. They only rotate one way. So just do that. And then you want to fold this piece down, this entire torso piece down, fold that head down a little bit. Then you want to bring this entire section down. That's going to come up there. You want to make that there. And then your two tabs are going to go into two slots right there and two tabs right there that are going to go in either thing there. So you just want to bring them back in and tip that in and tab that in and clip all that in and make sure that's tabbed in right there. And there you go. That's the whole front of the truck done. Now you want to plug his legs together down here, just like that. You want to fold this little piece up. You want to take these pieces, fold them out, fold this piece up on both sides, fold the feet up just like this. You want to come under here and flip out these little tire sections right here. Then you want to bring this up a little bit and then you're going to take the arms, swing them in just like this, rotate them inward like this. And then there's a slot in a tab that's going to tab these two arms together just like that. And then you want to bring the legs down here and there's two slots on the bottom here that are going to go into two tabs in the legs right there to lock all that in. And then you want to fold this piece down, bring these pieces in, and you kind of want to make sure all of this is leveled before you bring these in so that you can get them in. And this one I found just kind of finds its way home a lot easier. And there you go. There you have him in his whatever the heck this vehicle mode is. It's, it's awesome, whatever it is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, that is a sick alt mode, oh man, let me, I'm, I'm gonna say this though, man, I love the fall of Cybertron alt mode, that's the alt mode I really, really love, I don't know why I love it, but I love that alt mode, but this, this is glorious, man, look at this thing, it looks like a mouse, like, I, I just wanna, like, browse the web with this, I remember, I was at my parents' house when this guy came in, and I was just playing with him at my parents' house, and I remember we were, like, getting ready to go on a walk, and I'm like, hang on, let me close my browser history real quick, <laughs> I love everything about this alt mode. It is glorious. It is just amazing. There is a few tiny problems with this alt mode, but I'll get into those. But I love this alt mode. Let's get in here. Nice silver right here on the bumper. And then the way that this whole thing just looks is just so crazy. Love the entire sculpt of this. Big ass wheels on the side right here. These two smaller ones back here. Absolutely love it. Nice put, uh, peg right there if you want to do some weapons. And then up top, super smooth. Love this transformation, by the way. Transformation is S tier on this thing. So much fun to flip back and forth, love those extending shoulders, love the way the legs transform, love how everything locks together and tabs together, love these pieces that swing around. Unfortunately, this is my absolute biggest problem with this figure, even over the waist, I forgot about this. So this piece hinges in here and you have to kind of work it in there, like it won't just like fit in there perfectly, and that wouldn't be a big deal. Unfortunately, upon inspecting this, there's some stress marks forming right here, and I hate that because I love this figure and those stress marks scare the shit out of me. So when I have this guy in alt mode, aside from having him uh, wanting to do like stuff with him, I have been keeping these untabbed to hopefully keep those stress marks from becoming a problem. So that really sucks. I'll keep them tabbed in for this video. I'm sure it will be fine. And I mean, even if these even if these pieces break off, your, your figure will still be okay. You just won't have like, if this were to break, if these pieces were to break off, this is what your alt mode would look like right there. So it's not horrible, but I definitely wish that these stress marks were not there. Like, if you can't see them there, trust me, they're there. They are there. Okay, look, you can just barely see it right there. See it right there? 
at the top of the hinge, and then there's one on the bottom as well, and the same thing on the other side. So yeah, these having to like, you having to line these up yourself, them not going into place uh, automatically, is causing stress on these hinges, which really worries me. I hate that man, stress marks, I hate stress marks so much. Stop breaking my toys, especially this one that I had to pay damn scalper prices for. Anyway, so yeah, that really sucks. That's honestly my biggest problem with this entire figure. I hate, I uh, this, is my, this is a bigger problem to me than the loose waist, because I can fix the loose waist. I'm sure once I get my Kikis and I pump some Kikis in there, that'll be fixed right up. But this, there's no fix in that, unfortunately. If that breaks, you have to buy, you either have to deal with it or buy a whole nother figure. And honestly, this thing's been really hard to get. Like, I had to pay scalper prices for it. It sold out almost everywhere. So, that really sucks. That really, really, really sucks. So, there's that. But aside from that, the side of the Almo looked great. And then the back. And, oh, God, look at this. is a big problem with this figure. These giant fists hanging out is what you think, I would say. But, no, I don't give a fuck about these. Everybody and their mother on the fucking internet is acting like these ruined the entire figure. Like, Prime versus Prime. He fucking, he said that this was actually, like, one of the weaker figures of the line just because of this. Everything else about the figure is great. And then this comes along. Who the fuck cares? I don't fucking care that there's this hanging out of the back. This is perfectly fine. Hell, it's just, you just, you don't look at the back. And even if you do, it's fine. It's not, it's, it's completely fine. This is nothing. This is nothing. Like, do you like any jet former? Any jet former. Almost every jet former in existence has kibble on the back. You complaining about this is the exact same about, about complaining about kibble on the bottom of a jet former. And acting serious about it. Like, not pointing it out just to be like, this exists, this is there, it's not a problem. But acting like this is a deal breaker for the figure is just fucking retarded, dude. This is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. This is not like the fucking cockpit sticking out of the front of Legacy Blitzwing's tank mode. This is nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm not even taking points off because I literally couldn't care less about this tiny little insignificant thing. Alright, with that being said, let's talk about weapon storage. Now, the gun, exclusively the gun, plugs on here and actually looks pretty good. Just plugged on the back. It looks okay. This is pretty okay. I like this. I don't mind this weapon storage. The axe, on the other hand, your literal only option for the axe is to just plug it on top of the gun. And that looks fucking retarded. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. And there is nowhere else to put this. You can't put it under here or anything. You can kind of disassemble it and you can plug this piece up here and then pretend like that's like a gun. And then you can plug this back up here. But... Is this really an option? Does this fix anything? No, it doesn't. So, unfortunately, you're just going to have to leave the axe off to the side. And honestly, I don't love the way the gun looks up there. I much prefer it without the gun. And it would have been really great if you could plug the gun in here, but there's no space under there. But I really don't mind it. This this looks okay. If I wanted, if I would probably store him with this, okay, because that, that looks fine to me. Hmm. And for comparison, here's Studio Series Ironhide, just so you can see how he scales with another Voyager class. Yeah, they're pretty much the same size. Here is Legacy Motormaster. Here's Legacy Bulkhead. Just some random vehicle mode comparisons. And lastly, here's Rodimus. Real quick before we get into final thoughts, I completely forgot to show you guys how the axe works. So of course you can just plug it into his uh, hand right here. And that looks great right there. And you can even like get it over his shoulder right there. Looking badass as hell. Absolutely love it. Or you can make it actually, you can take it out. You can pop this open, plug that in there like that, and then plug that on the bottom so you have it like that. And this does allow you, if you make use of those butterfly joints that I showed you earlier, where you pull the things out and then you bring the butterflies in, it will allow you to get some double some double, some, uh, some double grip right there for the axe. And you can get some pretty dope-ass poses with it, which is pretty cool. And also, the axe also has this little hinge right here and can open up. And you can have this going on. So you either have this, the, yeah, so you have two options for the axe. It can either look like this or it can look like this, which is super, super cool. I love that they added that. So with that being said, so with that being said, final thoughts on the Studio Series Gamer Edition, War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Oh, I love him. I absolutely love this figure. If you are interested, if you want him, go get him. You might have a hard time getting it, but honestly, if you pay the scalper prices, I think you'll be satisfied. I'm satisfied. I do have a few issues. Um, I do not, I wish that his waist wasn't so loose. I wish that there was no stress marks in the vehicle mode. But aside from that, honestly, the rest of it, I can get, I can look past. This guy is fantastic. Some weapon storage would have been nice. Some actually good weapon storage would have been nice. But aside from those 
tiny little issues. I am absolutely, I am overwhelmingly happy with this figure. I think they crushed it with this guy. Plastic quality is immaculate. Articulation is phenomenal. Accessories are amazing. You're really getting your bang for your buck with this guy, especially if you don't play scalper prices. Even the Matrix, uh, the, the Matrix of Leadership gimmick, absolutely amazing. The transformation is glorious, super fun and satisfying and clippy. Flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all day. Have an absolute blast. Posability is extraordinary. You can get him in so much poses. The whole, like yesterday, literally like spent all night just posing this guy around and taking shots and taking photos, man. Absolutely love this figure. This is yet another S tier from, from Hasbro's Trans 2023 Transformers lineup. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe give me a like. Oh, and by the way, definitely get that upgrade kit too as well from TF Lab on eBay. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe give me a like and subscribe for some more Transformer reviews in the future. I also review anime figure reviews. I also review anime figures. And with that being said, this is Dia Guillotine. A signing out.